Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Patricia McNeely. I'm a Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. Hope you're doing well. And today, I want to talk to you about the April openings because there is a huge portal opening. It's, you know, this is going to sound kind of cliche. It's a portal of opportunity. But what that opportunity is, is to begin to avail yourself of the new template. Now, over the past year, it's been really weird. And everyone's waiting for a normal to return. But I'm going to say this. Your brand new body is a part of that new normal. And part of the reason is, is the old structures are no, are no longer sustainable. And it means different things to different people. But I want to bring this into a focus for you, for your personal life. And some of the things that you may have already been experiencing, some of the things that will be happening. So to put this into a context, what that means is it's on. First and foremost, worldwide, it's on. Now, that being said, everyone goes at a different speed, and there's a reason for it. The reason has to do with beliefs, it has to do with situations, it has to do with what a person is capable of. And sometimes the capabilities don't mean that the person isn't, you know, doesn't have some, you know, golden seed inside them that makes them capable. What it means is, what still needs to be unblocked or opened? That's where I come in because I am an expert at ascension, twin flame ascension, the twin flame journey, and also what this all really means because this is about having a brand new body. This is about a new template that really won't support old stuff and yet handsomely supports the person who continues with their embodiment. The embodiment of the new system from a soul perspective is absolutely imperative. So that involves aspects of recognizing or acknowledging healing, purging. Healing does involve purging and embodiment. There are parts of you that will integrate. There are parts of you that you have to actually reach up for. And that's not going to happen in fourth dimensional ways. And it's becoming very apparent to a lot of people that some of the things that they tried, like a program that says in 21 days, you will, you know, do, and it, it's just, I'm sorry, it's not that simple, but nor is it impossible either. You didn't come here to be dropped on your butt. And the other thing that I just want to remind everyone is you're not crazy. Now, some people have been you know, kind of aware of things for so long, you're burning out. I understand that. And how do you keep sustaining some level of enthusiasm? You have to turn this into, this is your personal gift. This is your personal journey. And it's a journey of convergence back into oneness. So that oneness happens at certain key spots within you. And that's what I know about. That is what I know is to how, how do you connect all the dots? How do you go back to your childhood and connect things? And that's a big part of what the energies of April are here for and why you're here. And so we're going to talk a little bit about good times. You miss good times. You want good times. Worldwide, everyone wants good times. Everyone doesn't want the difficulty. Everyone doesn't want to feel like they're slogging through oatmeal or slogging through cement. They want some of this stuff to get easier. They want to go back to an easier time. And so you do have people that, you know, get very nostalgic about it. And yet they're weeping. Why the weeping? Weeping comes from someplace. Weeping is also a release. It's a drain. It will drain things out. It's necessary. If you can't weep for something, you probably will at some point. I don't wish people to weep all the time, but you might have people that are just saying, you know, oh man, 
my neighborhood that I grew up in, we had so much fun. We played hopscotch and we did double dutch and we just like ran around. We played hide and seek. We did all kinds of stuff. There was someone's dad who moonlighted. He's, you know, part time he would make snow cones and sell them. And the summers were so much fun. We take the bus and someone else is like, wow, that sounds like so much fun. We're, we were so restricted. I went to these really strict Bible camps and I just, you know, I, I, I didn't have those kind of freedoms. Oh boy, if we had to be home though. And yeah, we did too. I saw so many things and sometimes boys in my neighborhood would get in trouble and, and yet somehow we knew they were good guys. And we all hung together. We dance and dance and dance and dance. Oh, we weren't allowed to do certain things like that. I just really, you know, I feel like I'm missing what I never knew that I missed. Do you ever feel like that? Do you feel like you're missing something that you never knew you missed it? That you somehow feel it exists and yet it's elusive. And yet it belongs to you. And yet you may have experienced it because you can feel it. And you wonder, where does this come from? Why am I missing or having a nostalgia for a place and a time that I don't even know if I was there or if it even exists? Is this just some abstract idea? Is this some other force? Well, it is a cosmic force. It's a cosmic force of remembrance. It's for you to really feel. And while you may not enjoy weeping all the time, it is important to feel. It's important to come into all your feels. Oh, you know when it really hits me when I notice when the full moon arrives? Oh, this last full moon, I was crying. I was, I, I cried for a week. Yeah, I, cry, I was crying too. And, you know, I wanted to go to the islands, but I just can't right now. But I was longing for it. I could taste the sugar cane juice. I just, oh, if I could have walked, I would. If I would swim, I would. But I can't. Yeah, I know. I I look up at the stars and I just start, like, I want to cry. Like, it's a place. But I don't know where. Do you know where? Okay, so you have people that... They're in their ancestry, they're something. In their childhood, they're something. There's some good stuff. There's good seeds. That's what I want to help you open. Those are your treasures that you need to put forward. How do you do that? I'm here to help you get it open, integrate, combine it with your essence, alchemize it, create it. Move it up to where it belongs. Now, what else is happening? Good times. Some people's idea of a good time is very different than other people's idea of a good time. I work a lot with adults, but adults forget to play or their manner of play becomes something else. For a lot of people, play means playing with the opposite sex or playing games or playing manipulations, or somehow that, you know, one sale, we're just going to, like, screw it to someone, get it in there real good. And, you know, that's not playing people. That is a part of the old normal. We got to have a new normal where it's win, win, win for everyone. And people's good times are not besmirched by any of that negativity, any of that you know, weirdness that somehow seems to creep in there where you feel like the shoe's about to drop or you're going to fall off the crevice again and tumble, you know, right down, right down into that crevice and it's going to take you a major thing to get up and out of it again. No, that is why I'm here because there is a design in place and we would be fools on multiple levels if we didn't realize we have a plan for this. There is a plan. There is a system. And there is a way.
and I have that. Now, what about men? Okay. Men can feel some really deep things right now, especially with March's full moon. And some people have been feeling this over the past year. And it's sometimes frequently blamed to be COVID. But the metaphysical reasoning and uh, energy behind what is really happening with COVID, okay? And are you going to be in such mortal fear that you can't even live, okay? Feelings of impending doom. Oh, jeez. Hey, do you, uh, how, I, I don't even know how to say this. Do you ever feel like something really bad is going to happen? Oh, you mean like, are you having an existential crisis? Um, I know I exist, but I, like, it feels like impending doom. I get really nervous. I don't know what's happening with the world. I don't know what to do. Yeah, uh, actually, I've been feeling a lot like that since I was a child. And, you know, I've seen a lot of things and it really makes me question. And I wish there were a place that, you know, everyone could feel safe. Yeah, safety. Yeah, I never feel safe. You never feel safe? I never feel safe, really. I, I got this feeling all the time like I can't wait to go home. You mean like suicidal? No, I don't feel suicidal. I feel like there's a place or something where I just... I kind of need to just, that's the best way I can describe it. I want to go home. Yeah, I want to go home too. Yeah, that kind of puts it into words like, you know, I'm tired of the struggle. I want like, oh God, like I just, I started crying the other day. Doesn't that sound stupid? Doesn't that sound ridiculous? Like I have no reason to cry. I got like things going for me. I'm healthy. I'm young and vibrant, but I just like, like something's going to happen. Oh, do you ever get that feeling like you're in trouble? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, somehow I know I'm doing good things. I know I'm in the right place. My heart's in the right place. But somehow I have this sense of like, yeah, there's going to be trouble. You know what? Um, yeah, I... You know, like, what do you do? I don't know what to do about it. I just keep it to myself. I'm kind of glad you brought it up, but, you know, how do you really talk to anyone? It's it's exhausting. How do you find the words? Yeah, there's like this whole big block inside that, like, uh, my stomach burns, and then I can't go to the bathroom, and, like, I got all this stuff that it just seems like it's, there's, I don't know, like, yeah, I get you. I get you. But I hope there's an answer. I just keep trying to see what is what's going on. Okay. I have those answers because men too feel a nostalgia. Men feel a longing. They feel that they want to be in love, but it may not be recognizable. Like there's layers to be peeled off. It's not their fault. In many ways, the way that history has been, it's burdened both men and women. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. Those are extra burdens too sometimes. And so I do have a fabulous workshop in four parts where we're not only going to address this, I'm going to help you with your other senses other than your five human senses because there are other things that you need to know about because this is going to progress along why not jump on it why not get yourself on board with the 5d body work that really gets results so my workshop is called the lover within because regardless of who you've met and most of the time people have met someone who is not their significant other half of their soul, nor have they met someone who truly can, you know, hold the embodiment and they fritter away. Your soul's not going to keep them around. Your soul's like doink, 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 doink. Get out. 
bug off, get out of here. Because you're not here to sustain that same old thing and then have to heal it again. <sighs> Hell no. So the lover within still exists and will still, you know, help you to steer clear of some things. You may have been dodging a bullet and yet you may not still be healthy or headed toward a healthy relationship. And you need to know about this stuff because we're going to cover it. The sensual lover, what is a sensual lover? Well, first of all, it's exactly what it implies. Someone who is tender and caressing and intimate with you. But it's also the other side of that word, of the senses, being sensual, sensing. Someone who gets you, someone who is you because they're the other you. And not a lot of words need to be said. You don't need to decode anything. All this BS out there about, you know, being a junior psychologist and decoding, it's baloney. Okay, throw it in the garbage. If you wasted time with it, then so be it. But come and join the stuff that you need to know to get you open. Your new angelic senses and chakras. There are brand new chakra and shared connections that need to open and get connected. And you will feel the difference. Opening your inner chakras and developing. This is many times what the men need. And women need some of it, especially in the reproductive areas. High heart, 5D emotional spectrum. Do you know that you truly are a being that is from someplace? And even though you could say like, well, I'm living here right now. I just want to live my life. Yeah, I get it. But you're still going to need to, we're doing this at ground zero. This is ground zero. This is the rebuilding. This is essential for you. And it is important to expand your EQ. And that doesn't just happen with compassion. And I'll explain to you in this how it does happen. And the difference between the caveman days and modern times. Emotional freedom from within. Wouldn't you love to get rid of obligation, guilt, shame, self-judgment, or other people who do that to you? Of course. There is a rerouting, and I will be helping with a twin flame reconnection of the neural, especially for fight or flight. Do you have fear? Of course you do. Fear is a normal emotion in a lower vibration. Fear can motivate you. Irrational fear isn't normal. Think about that a minute, okay? Fear has its place. And yet, what has built up over just since you were born? Probably a lot. And that's not to even mention stuff like phobias, or traumas, or things you've been repeatedly subjected to, okay? So that is a very important part of this. If you're not surrendering to it, allowing it, it ain't going to happen because it requires your participation. I know this because I've done it. I know it because I've been helping people with it, and they see the difference. They're getting results. They're able to do things without yelling and magically part the seas move things into place, open the doors, usually with just a breath of fresh air. So what better way to uh, time this than on the new moon, use the energies of seeding at the new moon to start. We are starting April 11th at 9 a.m. Central. Um, I'm located in Chicago. Let me know if you have a uh, different time zone, I can do the time conversion. The link is below to join. It's in four parts. If you happen to miss a part, you will get the recording, but I strongly encourage you come participate because my format is we go over the information, I open up the floor, and we get really to hear you, and even if you don't want to participate, you can hear other people. Sometimes that in and of itself, the synergy of a group helps hearing other people, knowing you're not alone, knowing you're not crazy, and knowing that 
Love is finding you. And love will always find you. And you can be proactive with it. Don't hide it. Let's get you to shine. And let's get you in your love. Or as I say, in your love bubble. Rise above. Change your perspective in love. Thank you. Have a good day. Look for me or email me at twinflamesmerge at gmail.com. Bye.